Refer to the cloud, you're on. Very good. Thanks, Ed. And uh, I know you're enjoying that champagne. I'm enjoying <laughs> what might look like a Coca-Cola to a lot of you, but it's actually something different. So there's another gadget. <laughs> when you go into national, national parks and they say, you know, got to be careful with this. We carry these around with us. And so we can stand right in front of the ranger drinking a Coke. <laughs> We will use that tip, uh, definitely. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So um, I'm Bill Cullen. I'm in Tampa, Florida, talking to you from my house in Tampa, Florida. Um, we just had a tropical storm pass through here, and uh, so we spent yesterday putting Canvas back on the boat. Uh, I have a website uh, called The Book of Sale, and I'd invite you to go visit that. Uh, just about everything I'm going to talk about today is on that website, so you don't need to take notes or anything. I would also say, though, maybe you could take notes. Christmas is right around the corner, and there's going to be a lot of great gift ideas here for him or her. So you might want to do some shopping with some of these things, too, if you like some of them, okay? So the book of sale, uh, it, like I said, that's where you can see a lot of this. And that's what the website looks like. If I have time at the end of this, I may open up the website and just uh, hit a few of the drop downs for you so you can see how it works. But it's fairly intuitive. Um, I wrote the, the website and, and created this uh, to share with everybody a lot of great cruising ideas and equipment and some sailing wisdom as well. And I think these ideas, while they won't save your life, they may save you money, save your back, and certainly make you more couple on the boat in, in some instances. I think as uh, Susan Hiscock says, uh, and her and Eric on The Wanderer, as they say, the most important item to take aboard is ingenuity. And those of you that have cruised long distances and faraway places know how true that is. So one of the things I wanna tell you about that as I'm going through this list of things today, we talk about things, the question always is, is where can I get that? So on my website, if you find the item on the website, there's a link there. I either tell you where to go to get it, or I have a link there to Amazon, let's say. You can click on the, that link and that's probably the right product or the best of the group that I found and the one I would recommend. Uh, so you can find them there. There is one thing I'm gonna talk about that I absolutely love that you can't, I can't find it anywhere for you. Uh, you can make your own and I'll talk about that. But uh, I have a, uh, an email address, the book of sale at gmail.com. And I'm gonna talk about a cockpit shade uh, I make them in black, navy, and dark green. I just ordered about two dozen of them for anybody that wants one. They're $60 and, and, and freight in two different sizes. Email me if you're interested and we'll take care of you, okay? So let's get started. 25 good things to have aboard. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is one of the more expensive items, um, but, but wait, but wait. If I get through those 25, there's more and we'll cover a few others. And Ed, I promise I won't go past uh, five o'clock or just before five o'clock, because I don't want to miss the predict wind presentation either. That's going to be a good one. I always say in these gadgets too, by the way, the kind of thing we're going to talk about is I'm a very simple minded guy. And so simple is good to me. And uh, I like this saying as in all systems, as complexity approaches infinity, in the meantime, between failures drops to zero. How true. So here's a boat I delivered to uh, across the, the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Lots and lots of gadgets on this boat, just everywhere, gadgets. Uh, but if you know me, you probably can see the one that I really liked on, on this uh, helm. And it's right there. Yes, it is the drink holder. It is gimbaled, which is really nice. And it has a slot in it for your coffee mug handle. So that's the kind of gadget that I like and that we're gonna talk about today. And just to prove it, I'm gonna go even simpler than that. The first gadget I'm gonna tell you about is close pin reminders. We use these on our boat more than we used to now. And I had a friend say, hey, that's a great idea. I'm gonna do that too. You ought to put that on your website. So I did. So when we need to remember something, we have some close pins that have things written on them. We have others that don't that just say, hey, or something like that on them. But the windlass is one thing we're always leaving on. And there's an interesting article on my website called Boatless, a windlass to boatless, you might wanna read. And that's why we're pretty good about turning off our windless breaker. But we always forget. We can't see the light when we go down in the cabin. 
So we have this little clothespin on the engine shut off that when I shut the engine off, I need to shut the windlass off. And this one that says red, we do that to remind our helmsmen, whoever they might be, to keep the reds on that side of the boat. So that clothespin can move to the right side or the left side and just reminds them because sometimes people's minds wander a little bit and the next thing you know, you're bumping ground. So just a little extra reminder, that one helps our helmsmen usually. Okay, oh, we organize everything in, in uh, this is a custom made little cockpit catch all for us. So we keep the clothespins along that, but we keep our phones in this and everything else. I've broken down these, these items into categories, kind of uh, uh, accessory ideas and gadgets, canvas, galley gadgets, I get a bunch of those, communications and safety. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is one of the more expensive ones. It's this watch that I'm wearing today. I absolutely love this. This is certainly in my top five. And what I like about it is the fact that it's a flashlight, as you can see. It's a very bright LED flashlight. And I can't tell you how many times, not only on the boat, but around the house, traveling, foreign port, wherever. Yes, I've got my phone, but not on the foredeck at night, I don't. And when I'm upside down in a locker trying to read the um, serial number off my Adler Barber little control panel, and I don't happen to have my phone in my pocket or a flashlight with me. Well, I do have a flashlight with me. I just am crazy about how often this thing has come in extremely handy for me and quite often the people around me. Another electronic device, if you will, but it's fairly simple uh, and a little bit pricey too, probably $180 is a handheld depth sounder. We use this to scout anchorages. We try to get in where a lot of people can't get in. And so at high tide, we've gone in and done the depth sounding. It also tells you the temperature of the water. So do we need to put on a wetsuit? Are we okay? Uh, also, when we're scouting places to spearfish and it looks like it's 15 feet, we can stick this in the water, push the button and find out that it's really 30 feet and uh, a little too deep for us to, to spearfish. So it's a handy thing to have on the boat. Here's one you may recognize. Uh, usually in the crowds, about 30%, maybe 40%, I think it's growing. This is probably the most popular one uh, on the website. It's called the Jiggler Hose. And those of you that have them swear by them, and those that you don't, those of you that don't, probably want to look into the one because so many people have this and swear by them. And I've got it here in my hand. It's a hose for transferring either water or some fuel. So most of us have two of these on our boat. And I don't know if you can hear it or not. That's the jiggler. So inside the end of this is a marble. And as you move it up and down, the water siphons and uh, very easily, a very simple thing to do. We transfer fuel right on deck uh, while we're underway. It's not a problem, easy to do, not a drop spill. It will empty this five gallon jerry jug in 90 seconds. So it's fairly efficient too. Now I have one on my website. Don't buy the one at Harbor Freight. Uh, be careful at the Home Depot and places. You wanna get one if you can, take a look at how thick the wall of this is. This one won't kink on us. It stays fairly straight. Don't get one that's flimsy that kinks on you. So this is the one on my website and this one I recommend about $10. Here's another item that some people have said that it changes their cruising because their wife will now go snorkeling like my wife will. She always has trouble getting back into the dinghy and is sometimes embarrassed by her efforts of, of trying to get into the dinghy. So we bought one of these, it's called the up and out ladder. And uh, while this is on the expensive side also, it makes a great gift. Here it is, that's how big it is, as you can see. And it extends out, as you can see in the picture here. And you see it there on about a 30, 45 degree angle. You put it on that angle because when you do step on it, it does go down a little bit and almost vertical. And you can walk right up it and step into the dinghy. It doesn't swing under the dinghy like you know a rope ladder would or something. So the up and out ladder, and there's another picture of it, both folded and unfolded expensive but a damn quality product i mean this thing is solid and it should last you forever i mean it is uh, really built well and uh and uh, i like mine okay how about checking the anchor set you know we pull into an anchorage and we see somebody else come in and the guy puts on the mask and jumps over the bow and 
swims out to check the anchor. It's a routine with a lot of people. Another nice way to do that is with a looky bucket or a glass bottom bucket, if you will. It's a bucket for viewing underwater. And I have one here with me and I'll show it to you, but you can check the anchor set from up in your dinghy. You don't have to get in the water. You can also check out a reef for diving. You might wanna see if there's fish down there before you jump in. I made this one out of a Lowe's bucket, okay? They're fairly pricey if you go online to buy them for what they are, I think. If anybody wants to get in the business, I think you should. But this is a $3 Lowe's bucket with a piece of plexiglass in the middle, as you can see. And I, I recommend mechanically fastening with three small bolts with the nuts on the bottom here, uh, with the head of the nut, head of the bolt, I should say, on the bottom. This little rim will keep that from touching your deck or anything, but mechanically fastening it is best because there is a lot of pressure that it puts, it gets put on, on this down here or from this side, depending on where you put it in. But some good 5200 or, or glue to glue it in also helps and seal it. You can make one of these, all the components are at uh, like Home Depot or Lowe's. You can buy the acrylic there as well. For under $10, you can make this thing. So if it's a five gallon size, which is a good size to have on your boat, you're gonna have a bucket anyway, and that's a nice big one for if you're gonna wash clothes or something. There are a couple of toys out there and you can look at these. Um, here's an example of one. Uh, when these are blown up, you have to kind of stick your face all the way down in them to make them work. The bottom's plastic, so maybe not as good, but there's there's a couple of them that might work until you can get one made, let's say. Try it first if that's what you want to do. Now, one of the things I do when I'm not sailing is I'm a ranch sitter. So when guys that own ranches in Texas go on vacation, I come and take care of the ranch. So I'm a ranch sitter. And when I was on the ranch many years ago, I discovered the feed bucket. Those of you that... Uh, I've been on the ranch, know exactly what I'm talking about. This is the best damn bucket in the world. It is durable, tough. I mean, you can't crush this thing or anything. The handle on it is 10 times thicker than that Lowe's bucket I just had. So this thing is built to last. I think it'll outlast your boat. I like this little bump that it has in the, uh, the handle. So your rope, you know, falls into that. But also notice that it has a flat side to it. And that flat side can go right up against your boat. And if you want to catch water, because you want to do laundry, uh, this is a great item to do it. You know, if you have a round bucket and the wind blows, it might roll down the, the side of the boat. But this one stays right where it is and, and it catches all the water coming off the scupper. So when it rains good, this bucket fills in no time and we can transfer it then to the five gallon bucket where we're gonna do our wash. And so there's a scupper right here and it all would flow into that. To make all the water flow there, we use scupper blockers. And these are Ziploc sandbags. Uh, Ginny on a boat called the Abbey told me about this and my head keeps getting flatter because I keep doing that. Why didn't I think of that one? Uh, they're the best scupper blockers in the world. Uh, and so all the water would get directed down to that one scupper blocker. They also make great paperweights around the cockpit. So when you have to chart out and that kind of thing, uh, it's nice to set a little sandbag on it and keep the paper from blowing away. We, uh, we use them all around our cockpit. There's always two in our cockpit nowadays. But uh, Ziploc sandbags cost just about zero. So if you are gonna do wash, if you cow caught all that water and you have that five gallon bucket, well, that's uh, the looky bucket right here, this little wand machine, it's a clothes washer, and it's about $20, but it really does work. It aerates the water. It's just like the, the cone in the old washer machines, and it moves the stuff around very good. It breaks down into components, so it's very easy to store if you don't have a place to store something with a handle on it. So there's that five-gallon bucket, and we collected water, and there's all the parts, and some people will use a toilet plunger with holes punched in the top of that. Uh, that could work also. Uh, I just think this is a better one. It uh, was engineered to do the job. So let's uh, shift over to the propane department. How do you know how much propane is left in your tank? Boy, I wrestle with that one all the time, even though I have two propane tanks and, and got a spare. You know, it gets down to the bottom and you kind of move it around and it's like, I don't know, is that a half or is that a fourth? How much have I got left? 
Well, a luggage scale, which I think I have one here, you can measure, you can weigh your propane tank. Now, what I do is you weigh it when it's empty. So this one weighs 9.8 pounds empty and you weigh it when it's full, it's like 19.2 full or something like that. Write that in permanent marker on your propane tank, okay? And then you'll never forget it. You won't be forgetting, oh, what was that number? Then when you weigh the tank and you find out that it weighs 13.8 pounds, you can do the math and figure out whether that's a quarter of a tank or a third of a tank. And you can say, well, we've been out two weeks and we got a third of a tank left. Hey, we're probably good for another week at least. So it's a way to measure how much propane's in your tank. There's uh, the little green propane bottles as well. And uh, we use those on our grill on our boat. And there's a way to refill them. I have the, the little valve that you see in my hand there. This is how big it is. And you can refill these propane bank, uh, bottles from your big tank. You just put it in between the two. Uh, you should cool the green tank down. I put mine in the fridge or the freezer for a few minutes, get them good and cold. It just helps them take on the propane better. Uh, once you do that and you connect it up, you turn the propane on and flip it upside down and leave it there for four or five minutes and it fills that little green bottle for you. So uh, it's a way to save some money. If you wanna know where to get some green bottles to stock for your trip, go to some campground on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> when all the campers are done and uh, this is at a national park. The ones that have the uh, plastic on the bottom are preferred over the ones that are just steel, uh, if you have a choice. Uh, so that's a, that's a place to get them if you don't wanna buy them. And where to store them on your boat. Uh, this is a piece of PVC. On the bottom is a drain that's open. It's a, a cap that's a, a drain cap, if you will. And on top, a black cap, Right here, this black cap goes on top. This will hold three of those propane bottles. Take one of your propane bottles to the store, make sure that they fit in here because some of them are a little more snug than you'd want, but it holds three. Now, some people will put this on the back of their boat on the stanchion and that works. I keep mine in my anchor locker. So it's not inside the boat, no danger or anything like that, storing propane. There you see the top on it. It's Velcroed in place up there. So I need one, I go up there, I grab one. And like I say, I keep three of them. Propane again. I was in an anchorage one time and on the, the net in the morning, a guy was asking for some advice. He said, my solenoid to my propane tank is getting so hot you can't touch it. And my wife says she can smell it a little bit. Do we have a problem? <laughs> and I'm looking around, where is this boat? I don't want to be anywhere near him uh, when he blows. Uh, but you know, these things go bad. Um, I think I've had everything happen to me in the couple of few decades I've been cruising, but I've had one of these go out on me. And, you know, on some remote place, you're not going to find one of these at the hardware store even, but you can find one of these. I carry it with me now. So if my solenoid were to go out, all I have to do is insert this uh, flared both ends or male and male in between the two pipes that lead from my propane tank to my stove and take the solenoid out of the system, if you will. Now, it's granted, then you're using the valve on the propane tank to turn it on and off, but hey, until you can get somewhere or somebody can bring you one of these, uh, that'll get you through. Or you'll be the hero with the cruisers on the boat that's about to blow. Okay, another little device. I, I read an article by Nigel Calder, and, and I, I'm a fan of his. And I think his books is the best. I, I have one copy at home and one on the boat. Uh, but I use a remote starter button, and this is a nice thing. I've had, like I said, everything happen. I've had starter keys go out. I've had starter buttons go out. I've had solenoids on starters go out. And in all cases, this um, remote starter is the solution because it bypasses all of those things. So you have the red that you connect to the red cable by your starter, and this goes on the black cable next to your starter. Then you simply push the button and start your engine. So you don't need the ignition, you don't need the starter button, you don't even need the solenoid on the starter itself to start your engine. I used to use this too to bleed my engine because I could uh, run it from down in the engine room, open up the bleed valve, hit the starter button, turn it over, 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 over until I get the fuel out. 
And so it can be used as that too, if you don't have somebody there to help you crank your engine. Costs like $6, you can get them uh, either at my website or you can get them at an auto parts store. I carry this and I've, I've had it for a couple of years now. I've never had to use it. And that's a good thing because it's a spare backup. It's 50 feet of quarter inch synthetic cable. It's like Dyneema. I think it might be a Chinese imitation of Dyneema. And you know how strong Dyneema is, especially a quarter of an inch. And, and how you can buy it for only 20, 20 to $25 is a miracle. Uh, what they're doing and, and where this is hidden is if you Google or go on Amazon and look for winch cable replacement or tow cable, they're putting these on the front of Jeeps and four wheel drive vehicles that go off road. You know, they have that winch on the front with a steel cable. They're replacing it with this. And there's a bunch of them on there. And look, they have a nicely uh, end uh, with a uh, thimble in the end and a nice uh, padding on that and so forth. I can replace any shroud on my boat with this cable. I can replace my steering cable, this seal on my boat with this cable. So I just keep it for backup. It's small, it's easy to store, not a big deal, but it gives me some comfort and who knows how it'll come in handy someday. But like I said, I haven't had to use it yet. Handliner yo-yo, this is a fishing gadget. And a lot of you use this. Uh, I prefer them on an on a aft cockpit boat. I prefer it uh, to uh, a fishing pole just because there's so much stuff on the back of the boat, the davits, the bimini, all that. It makes it when you have to go from one side to the other chasing a fish with a pole, it makes it difficult. Uh, and you know, it's, it, to us, it's not about sport, it's about dinner. So uh, I have a pretty good size article, I think under Sailing Wisdom or something like that, or under Fishing Gadget, talking about how all we fish, you know, we leave it out six boat lengths and what we do, uh, but it's, uh, it's good. I use 80 pound test on it. I learned early on uh, from an uh, experienced fisherman that it's all about the leader. So spend your money there, get a good leader, one the fish can't see, and uh, that'll make all the difference in the world. Hey, we, we also have one other thing. We've switched, I have a couple of my lines on what's, what is actually a kite reel. So you can buy those, these, and uh, actually, actually got ball bearings in it and everything. This comes in handy, not for reeling in a fish. You still need to hand line the fish in if he's decent. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you've had your line out for a while, now you're coming to the pass, it's bring all the lines in. This is great for bringing the empty line in with just the, the lure on it at the end of the day, makes it easy. So uh, that's a nice thing to have, a nice improvement on the yo-yo would be the kite reel. We have fun also making our own lures. I call them trash lures because that's where we get the stuff. Uh, I've got a couple of examples. If I, if I can see one sitting around here, I'll show you. Uh, pardon me for looking around. I get my stuff spread out around us here, but maybe I didn't bring a, a trash lure in. Oh, yes, I did. So here's one. <laughs> That's a trash lure. That was made from stuff in the garbage can. It, it is skirted, but it didn't have to. Originally, it may not have been skirted. Uh, but this is the top of a Ziploc bag. This is the end of a rope that was frayed. Whatever you have, there's a, that blue thing you see in the picture right here is a uh, instant coffee sleeve. Uh, we have uh, fun. We, we all make a lure on the boat and then we see who catches the fish, you know, the biggest fish and that kind of thing. We have a little contest and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for young, younger people too, for them to make their own lure and then catch a fish on it. And, and they work, they work, what can I say? Uh, the fish don't care. Uh, I say this is the best multi-tool, it's one I like. And the reason I like it is because it has everything I need, it's very functional, and um, it's got one feature I like, and that's the hook that you see on it. So I can clip it onto my belt loop, clip it on a white lifeline if I need to do that. I just love the clip on it, which also, if you look at where that clip is, that can open a beer bottle too. Another nice little thing, but I don't need scissors. I don't need a nail file. There's a lot of things on these multi-tools that I don't need. And this one has the basics. This one has pliers, knife, and screwdriver. I mean, that's about it. And it has both a plus and minus screwdriver, excuse me, a Phillips head and 
standard screwdriver. We call them plus and minus on my boat. Uh, but you know, it's got the pliers and the screwdriver part is on that end of it right there. You hold that up, you can see it right there. So it's got the screwdriver, the pliers, wire cutters built into the pliers and uh, corrosion resistant with some titanium. And uh, it's, it's a very, very good knife. And the knife, the knife stays very sharp too. It's my favorite and I've had a lot over the years, the best multi-tool I've ever owned. Good Christmas gift. Okay, this is one you have to make, you can't buy. Manufacturers of toilet seats on boats need to do this though. So. Um, and what it is, I call them seat chalks. I've had seats broken on a boat, you know, on passages, you're going across an ocean or, or the Caribbean Sea or something, and somebody's sitting down there and you're in waves, and sure enough, the seat gets broken. And what breaks is the hinges in the back here because that seat is moving back and forth, back and forth, and sometimes <laughs> in one violent motion, and these hinges break, and then you don't have a toilet seat. So these chalks, this is, happens to be a couple of scraps of starboard. If you can notice them, they're screwed onto the bottom of the toilet seat on two sides. They fit snugly inside the bowl towards the front. They're located right about here on the bowl so that that seat can't move one way or the other. In roughest seas, we've never had one break. And uh, if you particularly if you have women on the trip, you break a seat early in the trip, you're in trouble, brother. <laughs> because I am simple-minded and have a trouble with math, uh, I have a two-cycle. I have the ubiquitous 15-horse uh, Yamaha two-stroke two engine on my dinghy, like a lot of you do. And uh, to measure oil, you know, you go some places and it's okay, sir, that's 32 liters of gasoline. Well, you know, get out the math book and a calculator, but if you have this instead, as you can see, there's liters over here and here's gallons over here. 32 liters would be right where I'm drawing the line. So all I have to do is fill this jug up with oil to that line and I've got my 50 to one mixture. See, that's the 50 to the one column. There's the 100 to one. If your owner's manual says 100 to one, switch to 50 to one if you want your engine to last. Uh, so anyway, this just measures the oil for you so you don't have to you know, go 2.58 ounces per gallon. Oh, let's switch that to liters, you know, that kind of thing. So it just makes life simple. I love it. Simple is good, like I say. Here's another one that's really simple. I do a lot of spear fishing and <laughs> I call this a tip protector, AKA dinghy protector. You know, I take friends spear fishing with me and boy, if they get in my dinghy without a spear protector, I happen to have a couple of extras. I hand them one uh, because I don't want a hole in my dinghy and I don't want a hole in me. So uh, I highly recommend that. It's simply a piece of rubber hose cut to about two inches long and uh, make half a dozen of them you may lose one. When I go scuba diving, I don't even take it off till I see a fish, especially, you know, if I have friends around me and everything, but take it off, stuff it down your shirt or in your swimsuit. And, and then before I get back in the dinghy, I put it back on. Uh, this goes without saying that a nightlight in the head with a motion sensor is really nice. Uh, some people can even put these at the companionway steps. I had a friend just recently say that he did that. Uh, the bowl light's kind of a neat one. It uh, fits down in the bowl. It comes on when you walk in the room. But, you know, any one like this that comes on when there's, you know, motion in the room uh, will work. And, and it doesn't need to be very bright in the head if you're coming in a dark boat and it coming into the head. Uh, it's a nice thing. You can also use these for burglar alarms on the back of your boat if you want. So if the weather's kind of docile and it's, the waves aren't going to set it off, if it's a calm night and nothing else is behind your boat, you can set one of these on the back of your boat. And then if somebody comes to the back of your boat with a dinghy and it's not you, this light comes on them. Or when you come back home, it's nice to suddenly have the back end of your boat lit up. So that's another way a lot of people use these things on their boat. You buy them in three packs. So, you know, we use them so much. Uh, a couple of canvas ideas now. I'm going to start with the one that I said that is one of my favorites of all these gadgets. This is the one I wouldn't want to be without, and that's the cockpit shade. You know what I'm talking about is being at anchor, and uh, if you're in the tropics anyway, you know, the wind's going to be out of the east, 
uh, the trade winds and your stern is going to be pointing to the west. And as soon as that sun gets below the bimini, you start the, getting your retinas burned out by the sun. So a uh, cockpit shade is an essential item to help prevent that sort of thing and make you a lot more comfortable on the boat. This is the one that I had made uh, and it's uh, five feet long and 10 feet and there's by 10 feet and there's grommets every 18 inches. So I can take this and put it anywhere on the boat in any configuration. You know, I would also say that at the dock, it gives you a little bit more privacy, but we mostly use it to help knock this bright sunlight down. And here you see it moved around to the side of the boat because the wind direction. Here you see us traveling up the west coast of Florida back to Tampa after a long trip. And the wind, the, the wind's dead, we're motoring, but the sun is killing us. It's bouncing off the water and in the sky at 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon. And we'd just be roasting in the cockpit if we didn't have this. It's tied to the probably one of the shrouds up there and then back to uh, something back on the bimini. I have it kind of running inside there, but you can see how nice that is. So our total cockpit's in the shade here on a warm day. Uh, we got a breeze coming through the, the Dodger and the, the cockpit, and uh, we, we're not getting burned up by the sun. Nice thing. Now, the problem is, is you can't get this anywhere. So like I said, I, I have 24 of these that I bought in navy blue, green, and black, kind of neutral color, four foot by 10 foot, five foot by 10 foot. Email me at the book of sale at, at Gmail, and, and I'll fix you up. Uh, I, as I said in that previous slide, I take checks, IOUs, and small farm animals in payment for this. But it's just a wonderful thing to have happen, uh, to have on your boat. Uh, this one I'll go through kind of quick. You have to have the right configuration of your, uh, of your uh, Dodger and Bimini, but I have a connector between mine. And um, here you see it, and the wing is this thing right here between the, the connector, the Dodger, and it stops at the edge of the bimini here. And if you can imagine, the, the direction you're looking at this is the direction that a nasty wave, when you're beating into waves, would be coming over your boat and into your cockpit. Or if you're into a storm, that wind's going to be coming this way. You can't see the helmsman here. And the helmsman in this boat would be totally dry and out of the wind because he has this wing. So it's a nice addition. It doesn't cost very much. You can put a window in it if you want. Simple, simple thing to add. It's got a zipper at the top right here. So you need to quickly exit the cockpit. You just drop the zipper back, it folds away. You wanna use the winch if it interferes, you unzip it and you got access to the winch. Here it is folded back. You know, you don't need it unless there's nasty weather, it's raining, something like that. You can also use it for shade. Uh, one of the things that I advise people who are getting new Biminis and connectors made and everything is to have them start the zipper on your connector back here on the outside. Don't let them start it in the middle because you can unzip it like this then. Two things. One, you can sit back here and look up and see the telltales on your Jenny and your mainsail. You can see the, the things from, from here, yet still be in the shade of the Bimini and so forth. The other thing is, is people like this when they're coming on the boat is when they walk down the deck and into the cockpit, it's kind of open. They don't have to duck under anything. A better idea, though, is the drop cloth. Uh, this is a great thing. It, it keeps the rain out of the inside of your boat. It keeps the air conditioning in. It's an easy in and out, fast in and out of, your, uh, of the inside of your boat. And it also keeps the light out of the helmsman's eyes at night. So he'll keep his night vision. This is the fin, it also keeps the finish on your, your board. These are 15 years old and haven't been refinished. So it, it protects the, the varnish or whatever you have on your boards. And to get in, it has weights along the bottom here. Weights are sewn into the bottom. And it's basically a square, a rectangle. I have four snaps on this one across and they're attached to the sliding portion of the hatch. So I would flip it up and slide it back and it's out of the way, as you can see. Uh, just something I think uh, you'd find very, very valuable. Okay, so mosquito netting. Uh, let me go back also. One of our sponsors is Sailrite. They make mosquito netting. So if you want to buy some mosquito netting, you can find it under uh, fabric on uh, their thing. And, and going back to that cockpit shape just for a minute, uh, I forgot to say that whatever you're looking at using, make sure that it has 
around 85 to 90 percent blockage. If you're buying Tectoline or Pfeiffer Tech standard from SailRite, it's only 70 percent blockage. You're going to be disappointed. And the one you were looking for, maybe I can even go back. The one that you were looking through that I have, that is 85% blockage. And look how well you can see through it. So something that's 90% blockage, you can still see the shrimp boat out there. You know, you're not knocking off your whole visibility, but 70% won't do it. Um, so on sale right, they sell a material, it's called Pfeiffer Tex Plus and it's 92% blockage, and that'll do a great job for you. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but it's good. you're gonna be happy you spent the money on it. Pfeiffer Tex, it's on SailRite's uh, website under fabric, and I think if you look at outdoor fabrics, you'll find it. But let's go back to the mosquito netting. Uh, I found this at Joanne Fabrics. I walked in the store and I asked the lady, I said, do you have tool? She looked at me and she said, do you know what tool is? And I thought I had crossed some esoteric line or something. I, maybe men aren't supposed to know about tool. I don't know. But um, what it is, guys, because <laughs> women all know, it's netting material that you would use to make a veil or a petticoat, I guess, or something like that. But it's great mosquito netting. And it can keep no seams in. It comes in many different thicknesses. I've got mine here. And so you can get it as fine as you want or as big as you want if you don't have a no seam issue. Uh, it's fairly lightweight and easy to work with. You can sew it, but this one will definitely keep the no seams out if you can see how good it is. Uh, they sell it by the yard and I think it's 54 inches wide, which is plenty wide enough for your companion way. So you can buy a yard of it. And it's like, I paid $1.16 for my companion way mosquito net. And it comes in, excuse me for dobbing away, comes in colors. So if you don't have a green boat, you have a blue boat, get the blue. Uh, but it's a nice, easy, inexpensive way to make netting, mosquito netting, you no seam netting for your boat. And it can go over top of hatches. You can put weights around it or a, maybe a shot cord around it or over the hatch, things like that. So uh, very inexpensive, great material at Joanne Fabrics. Or you can buy the material on sale right. They have it as well. And you can find different ways to hook it up on your boat. Galley gadgets. I'm going to be starting to move a little faster here. But the first one's really important. Ziploc bags for ice cubes. I've shown this to a lot of people, and I got an email from somebody saying it, it changed their whole cruising life. So they used to go places and try and buy ice. I've never bought ice when I'm out cruising. I don't have room for it in my freezer, first of all. Um, we take a Ziploc bag, and you take a good quality Ziploc bag, like use Ziploc brand, don't use a cheap brand, and use the freezer bags. You know, good durable bag is what you want with a good closure. So get Ziploc freezer bags, fill them half, two thirds, three quarters of the way full of water, and then put them in the freezer. And in the morning, you'll have a whole bunch of ice. Use an ice pick. Guys, don't use the Phillips head screwdriver or the standard screwdriver yet an ice pick. It makes all the difference in the world, an ice pick. And stab the bag and break up your ice. You can see me pulling a little cube out then. You can stab it to it chunks like that. But you would get your ice out that you need for your two drinks. And then you zip it back close and you put it back down in the freezer until your next round. Um, I would also tell you this, that there's no fooling around with ice cube trays, trying to fill them with water and not spill them and all that kind of thing. And I know Tupperware makes one with a lid and all that. But volume wise, one Ziploc bag equals between two and three ice cube trays. And it takes up a fraction of the space in your freezer. So you could easily have one or two of these in your freezer and have enough ice for you know, a couple of evenings cocktails. Also, when you go into somebody else's boat, we would pull this out. And if you use the ice pick, you don't destroy the bag. That's why you use it. And, you know, we would stab it before we leave. Then we're carrying this little Ziploc with us along with our soda stream thing and our little bottle of rum. We open it up and get our ice cubes out and zip it back and put it back in our bag. And people, oh, where'd you get that ice? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's a great way to make ice on your boat. Saves a lot of trouble and hassle. Uh, and... Uh, 
does generate a little bit of plastic trash, but not much. So speaking of trash, you know, you ought to try to minimize trash on the boat. And one of the ways we do that, we don't always use dishes. Sometimes, you know, if we're doing lunch or breakfast and breakfast is sweet rolls and fruit or something, we're going to use paper plates uh, now and then, not always. And instead of buying really good paper plates to take up an enormous amount of space in your trash bin, we buy the cheapest, flimsiest plates in the world. It's like 99 cents for 150 of them or something. And then we use what you see there in the pictures. We use these baskets or the plastic things to hold that cheap plate. It stays in there. And so that actually can hold your heavy sandwich and around that kind of thing. And then we go to throw it away, you know, there's practically nothing to it. And if we're in the middle of the deep blue sea, we'll even tear this up and, and put it in the ocean, uh, you know, so, but not much trash when you're done. Obviously you can use baskets as well and put like a, you know, wax paper in them or something like that to hold your sandwich. It's a way to save trash and, and make life a little easier for you. We carry a soda stream on our boat and we make Cokes. We don't haul cases of Cokes. And those of you that have traveled around the world know that Coca-Cola in a can can cost as much as a dollar a can. You buy a six pack for $6 some places. And that can get expensive. And if you like a Coke a day, like my wife does, or if you need them for mixing your drinks, it's nice to have a soda stream. We keep one on the boat. And this jar I'm holding, one of these jars you see here, this is equal to 30 to 33 cans of Coke. So you're talking about, you know, more than a case of Coke in this size. So it's a great space saver. And think about the trash generated by 33 cans of Coke versus this. So it's a great trash saver too. We love it. We use it all the time. And uh, it, it's great. I call this traveling spices. If you're going to go charter somewhere where you're going to on somebody else's boat and you're going to be elected the cook, uh, it's nice to be able to bring your own spices. Because if you're chartering, you get to St. Thomas or Tortola and you go to the grocery store, you could easily drop $50, $60 on spices alone. So uh, I bring my spices when I'm going down there. I keep them in a pill dispenser. I can keep seven different spices in that pill dispenser when I go down there. And if I don't recognize what it is, I label it a little bit. Um, but this is made at the container store. Each of these little compartments unscrews from the one above it and holds a nice amount of spices too. That's just another thing. I think this is a dollar and a half or something, but nice. It holds about the same number as the pill dispenser, but ways to carry little amounts of spice with you. So don't burn it on the bottom. We, we bake on our boat. Uh, here you see pizza, but you know if we have leftover lobster, we make macaroni and lobster casserole, uh, macaroni and cheese, uh, lobster casserole. And I, I do rolls and stuff, uh, just different things we bake, um, blueberry muffins, that kind of thing. Always burning them on the bottom. So what we came up with was an oven stone. It's right there and it's a diffuser of heat. So it keeps your casserole, or your pan, your piece, or whatever it is from getting burned on the bottom. It dissipates the heat. It's actually like a heat sink. It makes the heat more even in your oven as well. And I'll tell you how to get one. Here's one I have right here. And you can see how thick it is. It's, uh, this is about five eighths of an inch thick. Maybe not even that thick. Maybe it's not even a half, three eighths. What it is, is this particular one is travertine stone. So I went to Lowe's and at Lowe's, you know, you get two free cuts in the tile department. So I bought for $6, I bought, what you want to do is get something that's unglazed. So find a tile or a stone that's unglazed. And I had them cut four inches off of the whole tile and then cut what was left in half. And it gave me two nine by 14 oven stones. Total cost was $6 and I could share one with somebody. Uh, so that's an oven stone. That'll really make your baking life go a little better. But what about on top of the stove? What about trying to simmer something? Well, you need to get a heat diffuser and, and you can use it at home too. But this is called the flame tamer. There's other versions and so forth. This is the old fashioned version. And you put this on top, over top of your burner and then your pot goes on top of it and it knocks the flame down about half so that you can simmer that sauce on the stove without it burning on the bottom. If you're making rice or something like that, it also, uh, you don't lose, all the water's not boiled away in the first seven minutes. 
Uh, there's a way to work with that, but this makes it just a little bit easier for you to follow the directions on the boxes of things that you have to cook on low or simmer. It's called a heat diffuser. Uh, you can get them at uh, Bed Bath & and have one with a handle kind of folds and it uh, stores nicely, but I like the uh, this old fashioned one. We have these on our boat and, and Ed, I am watching the time, so I will end at the right time uh, before five. Uh, French press coffee mug, Andy Tucker, a friend showed me this and on his boat, he has one of these for everybody. And I have three on my boat now, so anybody can make their coffee their own way. I have my friend Jeff Holler makes it like espresso. I don't drink that. I drink half calf that's watered down. So I can make my coffee my way and he can make his coffee his way with a French press. And that's what this thing is. Uh, it's, a, it's a French press and you make your, you put your grounds in there, you uh, pour the water in it, you put the lid back on it, and then you wait, you stir it a little bit, obviously, you know, it's basically a French press. And then you, at the end of the four minutes, you push the plunger down just like you would a French press. And now you've got a mug with a, about a cup and a half or two cups of coffee in it. And it's a drinking mug. So it has this spout that closes and opens. It has a nice lip to it. It's comfortable to, to drink out of. And because it's so well insulated, it keeps your coffee warm a real long time. It's one of the reasons I really like using it, is how long it keeps my coffee warm. And also, if you want, don't want to drink all your coffee, you just close it. And people can make a cup of coffee any time of day their way, not your way. So it's nice. It's, uh, it's a nice extra plus. Still in the galley, lingerie bags. We use these to organize things in the fridge. So uh, this is what you would use, guys, to, to put your small items in the washing machine so they don't get lost or sucked down the drain. They're it has a nylon zipper on it. Their they're bags are about two gallons size. And we organize things in our fridge with these. So all of the salad stuff goes in one. All of the lunch stuff goes in one. All the fruit goes in one, let's say. And you can set the world record for getting out all the stuff for salad for dinner in three seconds. Because all you have to do is open the lid pull out the bag and you got everything. So, and also you don't lose stuff. So you're not leaving the lid open, looking for that lost cucumber that's somewhere in the fridge and getting yelled at by the skipper because you got the fridge lid open for 10 minutes. So lingerie bags, very inexpensive, nice way to organize the fridge. This really helps our fridge. I used it both in our camper and on our boat and they really circulates the air at a very low speed and makes our fridge a lot colder evenly all the way around. I, I actually use two of them, battery operated, and they last about a month with the battery running in them. It's a very low speed little fan in it. And uh, I know you can do this with computer fans hooked up to your boat as well, but this is just a simple thing to buy and stick in your fridge and circulate the air. The shower sprayer that we have on our boat is what you'd use at your kitchen sink, right? So that's got the trigger on it up there. So everybody has to take a Navy shower. <laughs> and uh, the ladies say this is really good for rinsing their hair as well. That the spray has a lot of intensity to it. Not very expensive either, but a great shower head for in your boat. We carry a recycle bag on our boat and I hope you do too. Uh, this one's made out of mesh. We sewed it up and put it on there. Uh, and um, it's great that when we do use up these plastic bottles and so forth, you know, we don't always have a place to take them. So uh, we can wait and uh, wait for recycling opportunity and, and recycle them. If you don't want to make your own bag, one of the things you can do is buy one of these mesh beach bags. So this is one that has a handle, a couple of handles on it, but it has these steel or stainless hooks on it as well. So you could hang it by that, just figure out how to use it, bang a couple of grommets in it, if you will. And uh, that could be a great recycling bag. Something that's mesh is really good because sometimes liquid will drip out of these things and you don't want to drip them down your boat. If it drips down into the water like this one would, uh, it would be, uh, whoa, I just lost it. Uh, let me go back up. Uh, if you have one like this, it would uh, drip into the water like that. Hey, this is just a quick galley thing. I give these as gifts if somebody invites me to go sailing with them. I'm going sailing with Tori next week. Tori, I'm not bringing one of these on the plane. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's a neat deal. And you can make your own if you want. It's called Garden in a Can. 
it's a can full of dirt with some seeds and a little packet. It's good dirt. And so you, it has a pop top lid. You put the seeds in, throw a little water in, and boom, you got basil growing. It's kind of a neat gift idea. You can make these out of ball jars or, or cans that have a plastic, you know, peanut can, things like that. And you can have a lot of fun with them. Real quick as we're ending this, yes, I'm watching Ed. Communication, uh, I'll, hit the, I'll hit this quick, just the high points. Uh, when we go out of town, let's say the Bahamas for just two months, um, we use informed delivery. Um, if you're going cruising for a year around the world, that kind of thing, you wanna use like our sponsor, say Brendan Zile is who you wanna use that will take care of your mail and packages and forward it to you, open it, whatever you need to do. Those are the people who do a great job. But if you're just gone for a couple of months, it's called informed delivery. See this up at the top here, uspostalservice.com. You go in, you sign up, put a password in, uh, put your email address in, and then they will send you an email every day that they're delivering mail of what you're getting. And it's a picture of it. Now you may say, well, that's a lot of data coming over when we're cruising, but it's not. It's in megabytes, not even kilobytes. So it's no data at all. But you can look at what mail is being delivered to your house. So if your son is staying at your house, that's what we had, or your neighbor's collecting the mail, which we've also had, um, you're going to see what's coming to the house. It also tells you if there's a package being delivered. So then you can send an email to your neighbor or your son saying, hey, we're supposed to get two packages today. Make sure you look on the front porch. Uh, you can do that sort of thing. You can also communicate with your mailman saying deliver to the neighbor, that kind of thing. I got a letter from the IRS one time and you know, emailed my son is open that one letter, take a picture of it and send me what it says so that I can take care of that one. So it's a way to manage your mail while you're out cruising. Chris Parker's the greatest weatherman. He's one of our sponsor to uh, Caribbean Marine Weather. I see I'm about out of time, so I'll end it. Single sideband receiver. Uh, I don't, on my current boat, I don't have a single sideband set, I, but I use this. It's just a, a receiver, not a transceiver. And I listen to Chris Parker at Caribbean Weather every morning, just like everybody else, just like I used to when I had a single sideband. And I hear him just as well, and I get the weather. I set it in my cockpit. I actually touch the antenna of the backstay, but I'm not sure that's necessary. Take notes. Great way to get the weather from Chris Parker. And a um, couple of other quick things. There's more on the website if you want to go there and look at them. Lockup cable made from an old lifeline. You'll see that on the website. Uh, some of these other things, uh, the, the overflow, the high water alarm is, is one you'd see. And mini scuba tank, I carry one of those, but you know, these are available today too. This little five minute breather uh, is available. Not cheap, but you know, if you have to go down in 40 feet of water and get your anchor loose, this is gonna pay for itself. And my little mini scuba that I carry is just assurance that if I ever have that problem, I'm not gonna have uh, trouble. I'm gonna end it there. Uh, take a look at the website, the book of sale and, and uh, enjoy more of these. Like I said, do your Christmas shopping if you need to. And uh, I'll turn it over back to you, Ed, if you're there. I've disappeared. Thank you very, very much, Bill. That has just been super. I can't uh, can't believe a better presentation. And you exceed yourself every time you present. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll try and uh, move along here. I need to get one other person up, and I'm sorry to cause a glip in your screen there, but I've uh, got one more. Uh, presentation, and that will be the Predict Wind presentation. And Predict Wind is such a wonderful uh, supporter of SSCA. They are by far our uh, one of our biggest contributors, our biggest contributors uh, to our uh, partners, uh, and and we can't say enough for them. Let me see if I can pull um, Mr. Owen up. And I'm trying to find him here on the screen. And, and you can close yours if you would like to. Um, you see it, so. 
standby one, folks. If you'd like to take a, a break for a couple minutes for a bathroom break, no problem. And the last presentation will be the capstone of our of our day. There we go. And uh, Nick Colson, uh, who is the genius at uh, our next presenter, will be uh, presenting. And you, if you would would uh, wish to speak now, Nick, I hope that will work. Let's see here. I think I promoted you to a panelist. And you're now joining us at a panelist. I'm sorry if I've goofed that up. And there is Nick. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Hello. Hold on. I'll just get my video started. I'll move out of the picture and hope that my <laughs> virtual. Very good. good. I'm going to stop my video and we will allow you to uh, take over the video. Let's see if I hopefully my virtual background works. No, that's not going to work. Let's just go to none. Get rid of that. Okay. There we go. Can there we are. Excellent. So I usually have a virtual background, but uh, it didn't want to work. So well, that, uses too much, that uses too much space as it is. So that's good. <laughs> And you're coming from where? Where are you coming from today? Where are you physically at? I am in Auckland, in New Zealand. Excellent, excellent. Um, we'll turn it over to you if you want to start your video. Uh, go my, ahead. My, you can see me, right? I can see you yes. full screen, and yep. you're in great shape. Yeah, and I can. And hold uh, on, I've got to stop the recording currently, and I'll restart the recording. Stop recording, and then I will start your recording. 